So this is a smoking gun, especially since it has manganese and fluorine in abundance, which have no relationship before to normal office fires. This stuff should not be there. It is a key ingredient. Why do we know that? Because potassium permanganate is commonly used as an oxidizer in thermite. And fluorine is used in very special thermite charges called sol gels. Together, these clearly form the thermite fingerprint. This is smoking gun number eight, nine, or 10. I've got to start counting these uh, so, so far. We're going to get up to about 30. Uh, but gel explosives, sol gels, uh, they're very special thermite with extremely small particles of iron oxide and aluminum powder. They can be cast into shape. You can cast them into you can cast them into these devices like this cutter charge apparatus with an it's an invention and, and, and you ignite it and it goes straight through the structural steel in milliseconds. Much more effective actually than what's normally used in uh, and producing cuts like, like, uh, like these. Now, th this is an oxyacetylene cut, very clean at, at the site, uh, with the oxyacetylene torches that, that they use. Uh, very different from these types, uh, uh, which are found on the, also in, in the debris, wavering two, three, four inches. This kind of cut is uh, not what they do at the site as they're cutting the, the steel. So. Now, it, the problem with sol gels is they leave a very particular type of uh, signature, 1,3-diphenylpropane. And uh, this is, EPA finds, interestingly enough, 1,3-diphenylpropane at levels that dwarfed all others. My God, this is Eric Schwartz. He says, we've never observed it in any other sampling we've done. In other words, it's not from computers or high-tech or other equipment. It's not found in normal office fires. It is a signature of sol gel type thermites. And do we have any evidence of the thermite in the World Trade Center dust, which was ubiquitous throughout lower Manhattan, four to six inches thick, blanket, full of pulverized concrete, which we'll get to. So Dr. Jones analyzes the dust. He sent four samples of this World Trade Center dust. And he's curious. He starts looking at it. He's a scientist, actually a nuclear physicist. So he gets his, uh, his microscope, <coughs> his magnet, a little more high-tech stuff than I have here. Interestingly enough, all the dust samples have all of these small particles of, of metal. Some are very angular, like metal filings. Some of them are quite round, uh, like, like these. They're spherical in shape. Well, how in the world did they get there? There's billions of them throughout all, all the dust samples. He calculates about 10 tons of this stuff. Well, if you have thousands of cutter charges throughout the columns and beams in the building, and you set them off under explosive conditions, the byproduct of thermite being molten iron, a liquid basically, dispersed liquid. What happens to dispersed liquids? This is what happens to dispersed liquids. Billions of, does, uh, what shape are they? They're spheres, why? Because the surface tension of a, uh, of a droplet of water formed, or any liquid in, in atomized form forms itself into a sphere. This, that's just what it does. It's the only explanation for all of these spheres. Some people have posited, oh, well that's the welding equipment they had out on the site. Well, this stuff is found in every sample uh, tw 10 minutes away after the collapse of the Twin Towers on the Brooklyn Bridge, these spheres are found. Up high on the rooftops of the Deutsche Bank building, uh, they're found. So we don't believe that they're, they're caused by sort of molten iron is sprayed into the, the site. thermite reaction that forms into a sphere roughly due to surface tension and they'll solidify in the air. And so that, uh, all that information is preserved in the dust. And we then uh, look at the dust and we're learning a great deal about what happened. This is Dr. Jones. He analyzes the dust. Well, what does he find? Through his XEDS, X-ray electron dispersive spectroscopy, he finds that we have uh, iron, aluminum, silica, potassium, uh, in many cases, sulfur. 
uh, compared to a known thermite uh, controlled sample, it's basically the same stuff. It's ignited thermite. It, it, there's no question. Is that smoking gun number 13? Um, now, th this is found not only by Dr. Jones. He didn't plant these in his samples. It's found by the EPA. They have no idea what they are. No explanation. They just kind of sweep it under the rug. R.J. Lee, in their toxicological studies on the Deutsche Bank building, they find them too. Same chemical analysis. No explanation. So Dr. Jones has an explanation. He finds that it is significant uh, evidence of aluminum thermic reactions. And he can reverse engineer and find out what would be the ingredients before the ignition. And it would be powders of aluminum, iron oxide, copper oxide, nic nic zinc nitrate, and potassium permanganate. Interestingly enough, um, uh, so he goes back to the dust and looks for any samples he might have missed. Not, you know, not thinking. There's a lot of stuff in this dust. I mean, there's gypsum board, there's, there's everything. There's paint. But this is something different. He finds thousands of these. They're chips. Uh, this one's a, a sixteenth of an inch long. Red on one side, gray on the other. The red, the red side is, is the thickest, and it's composed of extremely small particles of iron oxide and aluminum powder a thousand times smaller than a human hair. This is called nanothermite. This stuff is extremely high tech. It's been reported in Lawrence Livermore lab, Los Alamos lab, about 10 years ago. When, when you get something so small at the nano level, the surface area is enormous. So the chemical reaction between the two main ingredients causes almost an explosion. In fact, it's very explosive. That's why they call it super thermite, uh, nanothermite. This stuff is not made in a cave in Afghanistan. <laughs> See, that's a big problem for the official story, right? This is only manufactured in extremely sophisticated Defense Department contracting laboratories. And it has the same ingredients in it as unignited thermite. Very, very similar ingredients. Uh, aluminum, iron oxide, sulfur, quite often. It's a huge problem. Dr. Jones finds these chips partially ignited. The red chips, it's not a complete combustion process, like out of our engine uh, in our cars. And the spheres are associated with the partially, indicating the spheres are coming from welding rods out on the site, right? They're associated with them. It's, it's absolutely fascinating uh, analysis. Well, he's documented this in a peer-reviewed paper with his team of scientists. 100 nanometers across these particles, a thousand times smaller than human hair. Uh, open Chemical Physics Journal. It's peer-reviewed, 25 pages. You can find it on our website, on journalof911studies.com, and on the Open uh, Bentham website. Uh, this is causing quite a storm out there uh, from people defending the official story because there's no de defense. 